Awo, awo. Yes, my brothers and sisters. Um, many ask, what is the proof? What is the proof of His Majesty's uh, resurrection and mortality? People say, well, he died. He, he he's dead. Well, the Bible tells us something too about this. So, in answering the naysayers concerning the death of his imperial majesty or the death of Haile Selassie. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 36. Let's go there for a moment. Chapter 15 verse 36. So grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture and let's get ready to receive this word of a willing and attentive mind, my brothers and sisters. Awoo. All right, so here, here, and this is the area of scripture, and we're using this particular um, New Testament recovery Bible. Um, we mentioned it in the earlier video, and we pointed the website one can go to, and they'll send out a free copy of this particular Bible, and along with the Schofield Study Bible, especially in the New Testament, when one is studying the New Testament, it has some very good um, study notes and, and references and other clarifications that um, diligent students of the Bible, like the I and I and like I and I, really need. So try to order this, get a copy of the recovery um, the recovery version, New Testament recovery version. It's an excellent study um, study uh, book, and it's it's free. This is the key thing about it. They have been blessed to the point that they can publish this particular book um, free. So get your copy. This is this is it right here, um, the New Testament recovery uh, version, and it's Bibles for America. I think dot o r g. Dot o r g. So what we want to touch on here. What we want to touch on here is concerning the resurrection. Oh, like how how great you are. This is some. Some music of yours truly, some Amharic reggae, um, and date a bit, and date, and date, and date talak ne. How how great you are, O oh, Father, I Father, His Father, a bit, a bit. When we pray and we speak to to God, the Father. You understand? In the spirit, we say, Abit. Abit means my father, I father, his father, the father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, the father of the beat, Abit, the father of the house. How great you are indeed, Talak. Now, here in the scripture, what we want to do is make sure we have, because this has a newer translation. This has a has a newer translation, but the translation corrects many of the errors. It doesn't do like some of the NIV and these other new Bibles that um, pervert the word in various ways, namely um, deny the divinity. You see, some of the new Bibles, one, one of the key of the new Bibles, it, they deny the divinity of Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior, of Jesus Christ. And if you go through a diligent study and there's a lot of good websites out there that actually show you side by side and you can go and check it out there's other sites where you can see you know you can vet and verify this information for yourself so this particular version right here is a good version but what we like to do is is to have both um, the King James the version that we are most uh, familiar with which is our basic text it's a basic text. People may ask, well, why do we study the King James or use the King James Version? Yeah, um, it's, it's this and it's that. Well, it is, but of the available Bibles and because of the familiarity that we have with this particular Bible, this is a good starting point, um, Bible and Scripture, the King James. So we have the Recovery Study Bible here, and we have the King James here and we're turning to the 
chapter chapter 15 because chapter 15 is speaking on resurrection and this is the particular theme that the Holy Spirit has has inspired I and I to to bring forward on this November 2nd 2011 on the 81st anniversary and memorial for the coronation of the King of Kings our Godfather Kedusabatachin Abu Kedus, Ketamawi, Haile Selassie. Now, the Met of Kedus of His Imperial Majesty, His Majesty's Bible, what we're going to do so that we we could bring it up on the, the computer, but let's just open it up right here so we'll have all three scriptures available. So this is what we do when we study, because I and I, I and I one, or I and I personally, I and I seek to know what the truth is. If the, if the truth proves that His Imperial Majesty is not the King of Kings and this is a fraud or a sham, and if we've come across that, we will be the first ones to seek to tell you that, regardless of, of, of whatever other conditions. But in our studies, the more that we study, even when we study the naysayers and those who lie against His Imperial Majesty and spread rumors and false accusations, many of those accusations and rumors we've gone about to study to find out whether they are, these things are so. And we found out that their error, their ignorance, their envy, their lies and slanders are all false and evil. They're speaking evil of that which they know not. And they don't know the King of Kings. But in that process of finding out for ourselves, we have learned much until our cup proverbially speaking, overflows to the point that we are able to bring forth this good news and the Almighty, in the name of Yeshua, and to the glory of Hala Selassie, sent I and I forward to do this particular ministry work. So we're speaking about the proof of His Imperial Majesty's resurrection, the proof of His immortality. Well, we know that there are many who choose to see his imperial majesty as an oppressor, as as an evildoer, as a bad guy. We call them the um, blame Haile Selassie, the first crowd. There's a lot of anti Haile Selassie folks out there, anti Selassie folks out there. But what we find interesting about the majority of them, the majority of them who speak evil of his majesty, don't even know what they're talking about. This is what really so. I mean, in the, in the age of internet too. You know, I'm not saying that everything on the Internet is correct, but you can go and research and vet, and you can really study things and find the truth if you're seeking the truth. Or there are some who are, you know, like attracts like, as we mentioned as a principle. So some who, who think evil, you understand, and they basically they have an unregenerated heart. So they will gravitate to any piece of evil, rumor, or accusation against dignities, and they will seek to spread indignities against His Imperial Majesty. At this present time, my brothers and sisters, we should still pray for them. You know what I'm saying? We should still pray for them. They have war against I and I. But when it's time for I and I, you understand, to have war against them, they shall not stand, my brothers and sisters. So don't stress yourself. Don't fret yourself. Just study and show yourself approved to God as a workman, male or female, you know, saying that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So there are others, such as I and I ourselves, who, who have a more spiritual interpretation of his majesty and of his imperial majesty's life and of his works. And for I and I, he is a symbol of, he is a symbol of redemption. In fact, the first proclaimer, and we might have to bring this book. This is what we like about this particular. Um, there's a lot of information. There's a lot more information. So we call this book one. We call this book one because there's more information. But some basic foundational points, such as who was the first proclaimer of look to Africa for the crowning of a black man? It was this man right here. The unsung we could call him an unsung hero right here, Reverend James Morris Webb. So we begin to even talk about ones and ones like Reverend James Morris Webb, who said, look to 
Africa, where a black man will be crowned king. In him, you will find the Redeemer. In him, you will find the Redeemer. And it's from Reverend James Morris Webb and other African-American reverends, pastors, and preachers in the turn of the century, the turn of the 20th century, the early 1900s, particularly 1920s and 1930s, a black African-American preachers in the Christian church who were studying world events and they were studying their Bibles prophetically, who recognized Edomawi, Haile Selassie. And the beautiful thing about these brothers and sisters is that they wrote and that they, 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 they published, even though many of their publications were, were destroyed, were erased, defaced, were suppressed, Yah has made it that that truth has risen and is rising again. So now, now is an opportunity, like in Daniel's prophecy, where they shall go to and fro, and knowledge shall increase as we're coming to the fulfillment You'll think of the old age and the true manifestation of the true new age, the age of the black Messiah, the age of Christ and his kingly character, the age of prophecy of Rastafari revelation. So this is a very interesting book as well. And like you said, we, we address in this the whole Marcus Gar not not the whole point, but some of the basic elements concerning who was that first proclaimer? And unlike what you might have heard or what you might have read here or there or believe, we go and bring evidence from the 1920s. We're presenting in here evidence from the 1920s, you understand, and the 1930s about who said what and when, you understand, concerning Rastafari revelation. And when we look at the Rastafari movement, and this is something that we're working on for another scroll that, that's in progress as we speak, that his, how, how should we approach this right here? Because this is, a, this, this is a very important, you know, this is a very important point, you know, concerning who really proclaimed, look to Africa. And this movement that was pre-Garvey, if we look at before Garvey, and if we look at after Garvey, you understand? After Marcus Garvey, this movement that we call Ethiopianism, see, a lot of folks don't even know that there was such a movement. A lot of people don't really know that connection between so-called Judahites or African Americans, in particular, and Imperial Ethiopia, going back to the the late 19th century and the early 20th century. And this half of the story, when we look at the Rastafari movement today, this is the point we was thinking on. There's a stagnation. We all recognize it. We know where we should be, and we know what we should be doing. And we see the lack of unity and, 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 and collective, the lack of love, actually. And uh, that's because we, brothers and sisters, who recognize His Majesty as King of Kings, have not learned this B-I-B-L-E as we should. See, some Rastas tell you that, well, the Bible is all right, but they, 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 don't, they, they don't have that, that discipline of mind in the Word. And when we study His Majesty's speeches and His selected utterances, Haile Selassie I, Kedus Abatachin, he places a high value on the Bible. So when we come across some of the brothers and sisters, and, and in a limited sense, we still like to refer to them and think of them as, as brothers and sisters, because we're not trying to judge them, you understand, unless they judge themselves by their own error, ignorance, and, and envy, don't know the half of the story concerning his imperial majesty, and don't know the real good news of Hila Selassie. And this is the reason why we have 
sought to present these series of, of, of books, amongst which this is one of the first. And we want to show where his imperial majesty um, mentions. He, here he mentions the Bible. Uh, it says, Your Imperial Majesty, what advice would you give a person who is considering the claims of Christ, perhaps for the first time? Because many of us, we may have been around Christianity, may have gone to church, but because we saw so much contradiction and something in our soul told us that this is only half of the story, we didn't know the other half. We didn't know about Ethiopia. We didn't know about his imperial majesty. We didn't know about the black Jews, the Beta Israel. We didn't know our true identity, you understand, or the true history about we, the black people of the world. And his imperial majesty in that particular regard, in fact, in Virginia Lee Jacobs' book, we're writing a new text to deal with a particular issue um, concerning... Uh, Rastafari in particular, but this this paragraph right here, where she says, um, where she says uh, to the Rastafarians, the ancient Judeo-Christian tradition that Haile Selassie brought with him to the throne is a revelation. You see, the ancient Judeo-Christian, not just Christian tradition, not just Jewish or Judeo or Judaite tradition, but Judeo-Christian tradition of black people in Africa who recognize themselves as Hebrews was something totally unknown to us, brothers and sisters, because that went contrary to let's make a slave. This is why most black folks don't know it, because they've been conditioned not to know it. They've been programmed. They've been hoodwinked and bamboozled to not know it. So we brothers and sisters have to learn this half of the story and have to, being led forward by spiritual power, proclaim this truth. It's about the preaching. It's about the proclamation. Not just saying, Ja, Rastafara, Selassie, ha, ha. No. It's not just, just saying that, but it's teaching and being able you understand, to reason, you understand, with all people, but particularly with the lost sheep of the Beta Israel. And those who are willing, these are teachable. But to all others, the truth is the truth. You know, I mean, the truth is the truth. And to do it in love, you're not expecting them, making them, forcing them, or feeling upset with them, because that means that you're not mature. And perhaps you should not be preaching or proclaiming anything. Perhaps you should only be praying, meditating, and studying so that you will be, so that the Holy Spirit will be able to guide you, you understand, to guide you. And that when you observe your own walk and you study this word, you'll be able to reconcile your eye with his eye. So it's truly I and I is one. Now, she says this right here to, Rast to the Rastafarians, the ancient Judeo-Christian tradition that Haile Selassie brought from to the throne. And we're talking about this is November 2nd, right? This is November 2nd, 2011, the 81st anniversary of the coronation of Nagusa Negest Ze Echopia of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. So the ancient Judeo tradition, Judeo-Christian tradition that Haile Selassie brought with him to the throne, the throne of who? The throne of David. The throne of David is the throne of who? Is the throne of Jehovah. Do, do you understand? I mean, do you understand? Because firstly, you must understand before you can overstand. Do you even understand the significance of that? Whether you like Haile Selassie or whether you loathe Haile Selassie, do you understand what the significance? Now, if some would say, well, the throne of the throne of David is not in Ethiopia. Well, this is those who want to speak ignorantly. They are ignorant. Do they have any proof to prove that? We have a wealth of knowledge and information. This is our common wealth to prove that the throne of David has been established in Ethiopia and Haile Selassie's throne is the throne of David. Thus, and therefore, it is the throne of Yahweh or the throne of Jehovah because it represents a Davidic monarchy. And the Davidic monarchy is real, is as real in this world as the so-called Caesars, 
as the so-called Bilderbergers, as the so-called Rothschilds, or any of the so-called old European white supremacy, nobility, or money, or as the Queen of England's throne, or whatever, you go back to her so-called ancestors, which really are, in truth, when you go further back, is the black nobility, is those Hebrews that ruled over there. So we have to really recognize that half of our story, you understand? And a lot of this information has been around for more than 70, for more than 81 years. It's the 81st anniversary of the coronation of the Imperial Majesty. And most of what we're saying, the information has been around for more than 81 years. And first proclaimed in many cases and instances by people like us, by black people, by African Americans and Africans in the diaspora. That's the half of the story, my brother. So education is the key. Education is the key. And it says that, and this is what's key about what Virginia Lee Jacobs says in this book right here. This is, this is one of our, um, we must say, one of our favorites. You understand? One of our favorites. You know, and the fact that Virginia Lee Jacobs most likely might be a, a white woman or a Jewish woman, you understand? And she wrote this really objective view, you understand? Showing the good, showing the bad, and even some of the ugly just to present the truth. Because there's some things, as the lies and slanders against his imperial majesty, brothers and sisters, we're going to have to not just deal with but overcome. You understand? Not for I and I's sake only. But for others, for other brothers and sisters and other people, other, other creatures of God who are potentially children of the true God as we are. This is, this is the real role and ministry, you understand, of we as Rastafari. We have lost sight of that, you understand, over the last phase of Rastafari. We can say over the last 40 years. But this is a new generation rising up. And His Majesty has a prophetic word to you, the younger generation, the newer generation who are, who are rising up. But the main word is study and show yourself approved. Because as we all learn and drink from the same, from the same source, the same living waters, what differences as far as confusion or disagreements should we have if we all are taking this name seriously, this name of Rastafari, and recognizing the true implication for taking this name. This is not a fun, a joke, a fad, or any of that other secular Gentile stuff that's going on out there. They're trying to kill the music. They're trying to, to kill the movement. You understand? They've been doing this ever since the movement first rose up. And actually, the movement of Rastafari actually first rose up, not so much from Jamaica only. Before Jamaica, it was rising up from Harlem, my brothers and sisters. It was rising up among preachers and pastors in the black community, my brothers and sisters. So-called Negroes who recognized themselves as Ethiopians and as Ethiopian Hebrew. And, and the proof is, it's, the truth is out there. You understand? Seek. You understand? Knock, seek, ask, ask, seek, and knock. A S K. He says, "Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open." Look at that. A S K. Ask, seek, knock. Those are the commands that our Black Lord and Savior has given us. So if we are willing and obedient children and make our wills obedient to good influences, we will learn to do. And as each of us individually learns to do, then collectively, the collective work, the community, the true church, the true exodus and coming out is being made way by this preparation, my brothers and sisters. This is what's been neglected over the past 40 years. Now, Virginia Lee Jacobs says this, and we'll conclude this part right here on this, um, though we have another message about uh, um, resurrection, but this is connected with what she says right here on page four. She says, to the Rastafarians, the ancient Judeo-Christian tradition that Haile Selassie 
brought with him to the throne is a revelation. So it's not just that the Bible says this, Weep not, behold, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. And Haile Selassie's title is Moa and Bessazem and the Gedi Yehuda. That's, that, that, that's, that's the point. That's the point. But then if we say, well, that could just be because, as some naysayers say, well, you know, people say that. That's not really so. But then the second point is that there's an ancient Judeo-Christian tradition that Haile Selassie brings with him and brought with him to the throne. So that's a revelation, too. And then the fact that the throne is the throne of David, that's a revelation, too. And the fact that the throne of David is called the throne of Jehovah or Yahweh, Baruchu, that is a revelation as well. But she goes on to say, which may have some profound influence over the future history of the earth. Now, when I, I read this before, because if I show you, I have some parts in here highlighted, as you can see. But I had not read this part maybe in, in a couple of months, a couple of years. It seemed like a couple of years, but I'm familiar with reading it before and studying, so I'm familiar with it. But when I read over it again, I looked at this one part when she said that this revelation of this ancient Judeo-Christian tradition that Halas Selassie brought with him to the throne being a revelation. She said, this may have, and we say it is already having, a profound influence over the future history of earth. Because brothers and sisters, and, and black brothers and sisters that you already know, that there are Rastafari brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, more than just us as the so-called ethnic or the so-called black, African, American, African, this diaspora over here, that there are Rastafari children. And some of these brothers and sisters, if you really get to sup with them and, and reason with them, they are as sincere as the eye. They're not looking for money, for gold, for glory, for fame. They are seeking the truth. And we need to understand that, yes, we have gone through a lot of persecution by the racists, the, the old-time pirate, the white supremacists. And a lot of this, this iniquity is going on even to this very day, even after 400-plus years. Genesis chapter 15 says what? It says the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Even though we're coming out of this, still there is iniquity seeking to keep us you understand? Keep us enslaved. Keep shackles on our mind. Keep shackles on our spirit. Keep shackles on our soul. And even putting many of our brothers and sisters, incarcerating them, putting them in shackles, what they call the prison industrial complex. And that's one activity of ministry that we are beseeching you, brothers and sisters, to, to co-labor with the society, this society, Lion Judah Society, in that particular ministry as well. There's a couple of ministerial activities. But see, we don't want to send anyone out there, you understand, in I&I &I name, Lion of Judah, in this society's name. Unprepared. You understand? Unprepared. There's been too much of that for 40-plus years, being unprepared. Father said, next time, send the right people. Send the right people. Why did Haile Selassie say that? In fact, one elder or older brethren, um, he told me, and he told us actually, that when His Majesty sent back some of the ones who had uh, went to Ethiopia during like the, the, the 60s and, and, and roughly around their parts, since the 61 mission, he thanked some of them, and he sent them back, and he said, next time, send the right people. Some of those Rastafari or Rastafari and Ethiopian-inclined um, brothers and sisters and others who heard about this message, many of them were, as the brother said to me, he said, um, they, they, because they didn't understand it, they were offended. But they still loved his majesty, still acknowledged their Rastafari, but they thought, like, how could his majesty say, the, what did he mean by the right people? And this particular brother told me that it took him, I guess, 
within that 40 year period for him to really recognize exactly what that meant. He said, we as Rastafari, if we say we are Rastafari, if we say Halasalasi is Christ and his kingly character, we say that he fulfills this and that and the next thing in the Bible, then we need to know this B-I-B-L-E. Not just as an academic thing, you understand, but as our way of life in this world and the world to come and in keeping with the teaching of his imperial majesty. Because in the imperial majesty actually says so here. This is like we mentioned and we've been mentioning in some of these um, November um, to, uh, Zare uh, updates, uh, Zare Winu uh, Zena or Were, concerning this new publication, the Gospel of H.I.M. Halasalasi, Book One. In this particular book that we just have published, and we hope that ones and ones are able to get a copy for themselves. It says right here, and was reading a part of it, but there's so much, there's so much things to say, my brothers and sisters. He says right here, he says, um, he says, Your Imperial Majesty, what advice would you give a person who is considering the claims of Christ, perhaps for the first time? And this is so beautiful, my brothers. Please listen. H.I.M. Halasalasi I said, I would tell a person who is considering the claim of Christ for the first time that it is necessary to have faith in the Almighty. Now, that might seem to some like, yes, that's, that's true, and they may not pay much attention. But when, in this ministry, we've studied to, to, to find out what is the, what is the, 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 the way, the truth, and the life. What does the Bible say? What's the true interpretation? And, we're still, and we still are learning. But some of the basic foundations, we are more ifident, as we would say, or in the world, confident in knowing the basic foundation and what we basically know. This is what we basically teach, what we basically share. We may have other ideas, but if we can't really back it up, by the word, by evidence, we don't want it to supersede that which we can back up by the word and by the evidence. Does this make I and I perfect? Because some may say, oh, you think you're perfect. No, I and I, is, I and I unfortunately have to say we're far from perfect because we still are making our wills obedient to good influences. But then when we consider Christ and his way, as long as we recognize ourselves and we, and we seek to do better, but we ask for his spirit, for his guidance, because this is not just about us, our will be done. It is his will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. So as Matthew says, I would tell a person who's considering the claims of Christ for the first time that it's necessary to have faith in the Almighty. And you know, brothers and sisters and mothers, that's the first that's the first thing, but then we have to ask some serious questions like, what is faith? You know, and study the script. What is faith and, and reason about, we have to know the truth. You know what I'm saying? And, and the only way to know the truth, we have to meditate on truth, we have to study it. We have to fellowship with other brothers and sisters and have Bible study with others. Maybe it, it might just be another brethren, you understand, or another sister in, you understand, and a time for coming together. Not just all of us. We're all scattered all over the world. Those who listen to this message are all over the globe, brothers and sisters. So the only time that we see within the divine mind we'll all come together is on and in holy Mount Sion in our African Zion. But we have to first get from here, where we're at, each of us, there, Jehovah's, and the good news, and Christ is the answer. Christ in his kingly character is the revelation that Christ, the true Christ, is the answer in spirit and in truth. So the, the first thing is to have faith in the Almighty, that it is necessary to have love. So first is faith, and then is love. And that it is necessary to conduct oneself in a manner that we have been taught to do in the Bible. Now, some of us may have been taught the Bible. Some may even say, yeah, I know the Bible. I grew up in church, Bibles. But we all, in considering the claim of Christ in his kingly character, 
must be as babes again. That means we must start with the basics. And this is what we've tried to present in this new book, book one, the gospel of him, Haile Selassie, is those basics. So that brothers and sisters can study this, can go look things up in the Bible, as well as use the internet and other means of gathering that information, gathering that knowledge, head resting with Yah in meditation, praying for the guidance of the Holy Spirit in the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach, in the name of Jesus Christos. See why we say in the name of Jesus Christos? Because that is the will of our Father. That is the will of Abba Kedus. That is the will of Kedus Abba Tachin. That is the will of His Majesty. How do we know it? Based on His utterance. Based on His Word. So who are we to believe or accept? A bread drain or a cis strain? You understand? Who might or might not know? Or are we to know the truth for ourselves by going to the source, going to the teaching? of his imperial majesty and his majesty goes on to say I would also advise him to seek secular knowledge seek knowledge about the seclorum but notice the order the order first first is Jah first is God first is getting our spiritual house in order with God and then the secular knowledge would will be more overstandable because some seek the secular knowledge first with a incomplete faith and love and conduct and when they learn about this big bad evil world some of them go crazy some of them lose their minds and this is serious stuff this is this is serious teaching brothers and sisters. this is we're not, we're not just hyping this up some of us know that this has happened to some ones and ones that we would consider to be very close near dear dearly beloved good brothers and sisters but when they find out about the world the seclorum and not being grounded in Christ in his kingdom, not being grounded in the Bible, not being grounded in the covenant, like grounded in the faith, grounded in the love, grounded in the word. They've been overcome by that seclorum. So his majesty advises us after the faith in the Almighty, the necessary love, the necessary conduct according to the B I B L E, the Bible. He says, I would also advise him to seek secular knowledge. For the more one knows, the more he realizes the need for a prime mover. That the more you get to know. And this is something interesting because a lot of scientists too, many of them who thought and they were atheists. You understand? And there's testimonies of science, scientists that, that dismiss so-called the uh, Bible as it was preached under white supremacy, no doubt, and the blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus, they dismissed all of that. They dismissed religion and all spirituality. But as they got to know more and more, they began to recognize there must be a prime mover. There must be an intelligence, a divine intelligence behind science and behind creation. So his majesty is once again right and exact that the more one knows has gnosis the more he realizes the need for a prime mover, the need for a creator, a creator who is good, a creator who is good, and the need, the need for salvation, the need for salvation, and also for peaceful life upon the earth. I would also tell him to learn his Majesty goes on, and this is also very, this is on page 143 and 144 of the Gospel of the Imperial Majesty, our newly um, published text, the Gospel of the Imperial Majesty, or HIM, the Gospel of HIM, Haile Selassie, Book 1. And he says, I would also tell him to learn and to think for himself. To think, this is why we don't try to say, this is it, and you've got to think this way. Some things, it is, it is necessary for those who seek to see it in the way of truth. But one should learn and one should think for themselves. This, this is very much key. And to think for himself the ways he would serve the Lord. One should really meditate how best would they serve his majesty. Would they serve the Father and the Son being guided by the Holy Spirit, the triune God. In this thought, and in this undertaking of his, he will inevitably find the way of serving his fellow men. So when one really truly 
find, as Matthew says, in this thought and this undertaking of his, he will inevitably, that means if he is patient, if he, if, if, if he is, if he is um, consistent in seeking, he will find, he will find the way of serving his fellow men. For his faith would then be manifested by his conduct. His faith will be manifested by his akahed, by his halakha, by his walk, by his conversation, his behavior. If Christians behave in this way, if we dedicate ourselves to this fundamental task, this is the fundamental task amongst each of us individually and all of us collectively, so among each I and among I and I as one, my brothers and sisters. If we dedicate ourselves to this fundamental task, then we will have a peaceful world. So if we look at the world today, is it a peaceful world? No. But there's a lot of Christians around. But they have not dedicated themselves or lithicated themselves to this task. This is why there's not a peaceful world. But if one does, if we, if I and I, if you and I, if I and I livicate ourselves to say dedicate in the true sense, but livicate I and I selves to this fundamental task, then we will have, and I and I will have, a peaceful world and will be assured of not transgressing against the will and the commandment of God. Amen and amen. So, there's so much more, my brothers and sisters, but if we, I mean, we could just spend, spend time just, just reading through and just preaching on this. But we hope and pray, you know, with your support and with your prayers that we'll be able to get more and more of these out, even for free. Unfortunately, at this present time, because of the, the current, you could say, economic level of the ministry and the cooperation amongst us and the tithes and the offerings, we're not able to do that. So this, this particular collector's edition, because of the quality of the paper, makes the cost of it roughly around $25 at this present time. We're still trying to work with the, with the printers and to get this much more affordable, you understand? But if one is able to, please go to www.lojsociety.org and get your copy today and look for it soon on the Google Books. It should be posted on the Google Books. We don't know how many pages that they will allow ones to, to, to read for free. And we, and we hope that they even allow ones the whole book to read for free so at least ones will know what it is, you understand, and that might inspire them to, to, to pray for us, to to uh, support us with their tithes, with their donations, and to, to co-labor with I and I. So my brothers and sisters, once again, uh, a very happy and a very blessed Melcom and a good day. And this is indeed a very good day because the essence of Rastafari, this is the fact, this is the fact that the essence of the man, Ras Tefari, of Ras Tefari, survives amongst I and I and I, Ras Tefari, and so the Ras Tefari as the movement. And this, as Virginia Lee Jacobs even says right here, is in itself, this is a type of resurrection, and this is a type of immortality the resurrection and the immortality of Moa Andesa, the Ima Negeda, Yehuda, Kedamawi, Haile Selase, Siyume, Egezi Abi, Her, Negusa Neges, the Ethiopia of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Haile Selase the first, the elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia.